fine mess that social justice got us into. So, how do we clean it up? There's times where you sit there and ask, why don't you just leave things alone? Why is it that you have to try and fix something that isn't broken? You cannot push evolution at all. There's no point in pushing it because all it does is cause horrible mutations which doesn't make anything better, but makes things worse. And by the time you achieve your goal with all of your experiments, evolution would have created something better. Social justice warriors or extreme radical feminists who don't play games trying to push and force the gaming industry to include more female protagonists and hire more female developers as if there's a sea of female developers to choose from when the reality is that most women aren't really into game development. There's the gaming media who's eating out of the palms of social justice warriors. If they actually believe that crap, then they're stupid. If they don't, then they're just trying to get clickbait for profit. They're acting much like Fox News where they'll say anything stupid for ratings, which has made them a laughing stock. It's the bias and misrepresentation of facts that killed newspapers, and when that leaked over into television, that killed it as well, and now it's killing internet media. Remember Dorito Gate where Jeff Kiley, or however his name is pronounced, was talking about Halo 4 and had Mountain Dew and Dorito sitting perfectly right next to him in the most obvious product placement ever? And just so you guys know, I'm completely against product placement. All the gaming industry needs to do is stay its course when it comes to that all-inclusive demographic, because games are starting to appeal to more and more people, and the gaming industry is taking note of that. Developers will do what needs to be done so they can continue to make games that people will want to play and therefore create returning customers. The gaming industry, much like the movie industry, will exploit patterns that generate the most revenue. Why do you think that Call of Duty has gone on for so long despite it being criticized as continuously becoming more and more stale as the years go on? Or why Skyland has become such a huge success causing Disney and Nintendo to follow suit. So the more females that get into gaming will cause the industry to respond to keep them playing games. They do not have a responsibility to treat female characters with preferential treatment, because then there would be no reason to include a female character at all and the developers would just do a gender swap and have the same things happen to a male character. Developers should not listen to people who don't play video games. If video games are a form of artwork, then you have absolutely no right to interfere with an artist's work, just because you and you alone feel uncomfortable with what's in there. So it's really just a matter of ignoring it because it's not hurting anyone and isn't causing any damage. Some people are quick to say that ignoring it's a problem and that it needs to be addressed because ignoring it is on par with ignoring real life racial, gender, or sexual orientation discrimination. Really? You're really going to go that far? I've brought this up before in my No Room for Grey video, where people are seeing things in black and white and continue to go from one extreme to the next. Saying that ignoring the problem of gender stereotypes in gaming is like ignoring racism happening on the street with a white guy calling someone a racial slur. How do you make that jump in logic? A damsel in distress in a video game is nowhere near the Westboro Baptist Church's gay bashing at funerals. Recently, Kotaku posted an article about how there's a lot of white main characters and the black characters are often reduced to outdated stereotypes and complained that having a black character voiced by a white actor was the equivalent to blackface. You want a character, female, black, Hispanic, or whatever, breaking the stereotypes. And when you get that, people complain about how the character is just a white guy on the inside. You cannot facepalm any harder than that. Again, this brings up the lose-lose situation, where if you give people what they want, they still complain. And that's the intolerance here. No one wants to settle for what they're given because it's never good enough, and they refuse to meet anyone halfway. And even when they do get what they want, they still complain about it. So what can game developers do? The answer is simple. Just keep making games. That's all they have to do. Make games, see who buys what, analyze the patterns, then build and market the games around the data collected. Bending over to appease people who don't play games just so they don't have to feel uncomfortable about something that doesn't affect them in their daily lives at all is a bad business model and will run them into the ground. That's why I've been saying that they don't need to do anything because they're already doing it. Patience is a virtue, you know. Now the gaming media, on the other hand, really needs to clean up their act. Instead of ignoring the criticism, they spun it to make themselves look like the victim, using every quiver in their arrow to try and make gamers look as bad as they possibly could. The years of building the reputation of gamers, countering mainstream criticism that video games create negative behavior in people with studies that prove otherwise, all of that thrown out. 
thrown out to defend themselves from criticism and it wasn't even that big of a deal initially. When Anita started her videos, they remained neutral and just reported on when she uploaded a new one but left it at that. But when the Zoe Quinn affair broke out, they started railing against gamers like some giant cat was let out of the bag. They turned into Fox News, sensationalizing Gamergate and making gamers look as bad as they possibly could, when they obviously knew that there were only a few bad apples in the bunch, but still chose to raise the orchard, selling out gamers for clickbait and making them look like horrible people to those who know nothing about gaming or gaming culture, which in turn could lead to video games losing their art status here in America, and therefore being prone to government regulation. Much like other countries censor or outright ban games they don't like. That can happen here because of the media sensationalizing the few asshole gamers and applying that bad behavior and saying that all gamers are like that when that is not true. There's a petition going around asking Kotaku and Polygon to try and bridge the gap they created between them and gamers. I think Kotaku has started on that path, but Polygon still tries to maintain that gap. In fact, recently, I was banned from Polygon. They claimed that I was trolling, when the reality is I was legitimately criticizing them for their extreme bias against Nintendo and their extreme favoritism towards Microsoft. I don't really go to Kotaku like I used to, and Polygon has become more of a passing glance lately, because I've been going to the new joystick on Engadget and GamesRadar more, and I've been adding other sites like Destructoid to the list that I check out, and starting to look at smaller sites like the Tanuki for my gaming news. Sites that realize that games are for fun and entertainment, not as a driving force for bias agendas. And lately, you can't tell if articles written on Kotaku are for them or are links to their affiliates, which I find incredibly annoying. I still think that they should apologize, not because they chose a quote-unquote wrong side to be on. I could not care less what stance they took. But I think that they could have handled it a lot better and in a more friendly way than they did. And some of us gamers can stand to improve ourselves a bit as well. There is toxicity in the gaming community without a doubt. I'm not going to say boys will be boys, because some of the behavior is inexcusable and should be curbed because it's mostly younger gamers who are doing this, and the parents should be parenting to correct the bad behavior they should be seeing what their kids are doing online and checking what they do. There was this one time a female game writer got a threatening message from someone. She found out it was a kid and sent the transcript to his mother who apologized and said she was going to take care of it. So don't do stupid and dangerous things, because law enforcement is taking note lately and are arresting people for pulling these so-called pranks. As much as you think you're invincible behind your monitor, you're not. Doing stuff like that will land you in jail, and I know that none of you want that. Unless your goal is to marry someone named Bubba in a prison wedding. But really, the problem here lies with social justice warriors and extreme radical feminists. And as I stated way back in the beginning, at the core, there's nothing wrong with feminism. And like I said in my violence in gaming video, there's nothing wrong with social justice at its core either. Everyone should have equal rights regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. But there's a line that should not be crossed, because you're crossing into preferential treatment which is not equal. Like the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. African Americans took to the streets in protests and even riots broke out, claiming racism and that white cops are always shooting to kill African Americans. But what about Christopher Rope, a 17-year-old white teen who was shot by a white cop at his door for holding a Wii remote? Where's the protests and riots for him? Why didn't the news cover his death like they did Michael Brown? And the truth of the matter is, the media was sensationalizing the death of Michael Brown, making it look like a white cop shooting African Americans problem. But that's not true. It's a cop shooting first and asking questions later problem, which affects everyone, not just one specific race. But a fictional female video game character being knocked out and kidnapped is about a thousand miles away from the ballpark that is real life cops shooting real life unarmed civilians. It's really making a mountain out of an anthill here, especially when the gaming industry is already treating female characters better, making more playable female characters and making games that appeal to women. And these people need to not only realize but accept that just because something doesn't appeal to them, that doesn't mean that it doesn't appeal to everyone. That's like me saying that just because I don't like white chocolate, that no one likes white chocolate, and that chocolate manufacturers should stop making white chocolate. 
Instead of saying, hey, this isn't for me and moving on with your life, you and a small group of people have to take the really silly route and want something drastically changed because you don't like it. Well, that just means that you're selfish and only care about you. I know that throughout this whole time I've railed against social justice warriors, but a lot of them just have the silliest reasons for their actions. It's not like they're fighting for equal rights, employment, and education like the civil rights movements. What they're doing now is complaining about how fictional characters are treated and saying that it affects our culture negatively. Even though there are a lot of studies that say fictional media doesn't cause negative behavior. The cherry picking and purposely twisting things around and taking them out of context needs to stop. Because it hurts your credibility, especially when things are blatantly obvious and is at the bottom of list of concerns. How is Bayonetta higher up on the list of characters that can be considered sexually objectified than the Dead or Alive series, especially the beach volleyball spin-offs? How is it that Nita Sarkeesian hasn't brought up Dead or Alive beach volleyball yet? I know that she will, but you'd think that'd be the first thing she'd talk about because it's a game series where all the female characters are in skimpy swimwear, and their breasts bounce and jiggle when they move, and they make suggestive poses. While Bayonetta, who I do not think is sexually objectified but sexually empowered, is fully clothed, so to speak, and when her clothes disappear to summon monsters, you don't really see anything and it's very brief. Unlike Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball, where it just rubs it in your face constantly. And in all honesty, it's not as bad as some people are making it out to be. Things are improving. It just needs some patience and tolerance. I don't think that video games or the gaming industry is sexist just because it has more men in the business and more men interested in playing games. And appealing to the majority demographic of gaming is what's going to keep it in business. But as the demographic changes, games will change and the way their marketing will also be changed. So demanding change when it's already happening is redundant. And demanding faster change just isn't going to happen because it can cause monetary damage. And with gaming studios laying off people left and right or shutting down completely, new ventures are going to be extremely extremely risky, so it's wiser to ease into being more inclusive than thunking it down and expecting people to accept it. And the thing is, social justice warriors are actually getting their way, just not at the instantaneous rate they want it in. But social justice warriors and extreme radical feminists need to take that stick that is so firmly wedged up their ass and remove it. Because when you go looking for sexism or racism, you're going to find it. Not because it's actually there, but because you want it to be there. You want it to be there so badly you're reading into things incorrectly and seeing things that aren't there. And even if it is there, one, it's fiction so what happens in the game isn't actually happening in real life. Two, it's probably, and more than likely, unintentional. And three, even if it was intentional, it's probably for character development, like Edward Norton's character in American History X. Years ago, it was that games were from the devil to make people into violent Satan worshippers. Nowadays, it's a conspiracy by straight white males to make people homophobic, racist, and sexist. Same shit, different words. If Anita Sarkeesian wasn't purposely taking things out of context and cherry picking, then maybe she might have a platform to stand on based on actual facts, instead of the balloon of sensationalism that's soon to pop. She's the flavor of the month and that's all she'll ever be. We unfortunately do not live in a perfect world where there is no imagery that will make people feel uncomfortable, where we don't have unkind thoughts or think anything negative or fantasize anything. And that's what the social justice warriors want. They want to take away your right to fantasize, which is is what makes you human. To continue this war on boys is a waste of time, because taking things out of context to push for equal treatment isn't that. It's a push for preferential treatment, so they don't feel uncomfortable with how fictional characters are treated. Which I find silly that their priorities are so out of whack that they're ignoring the real problems of real world people in favor of fictional ones. They're concerned with the equality of fictional characters. Has it really come down to this? Complaining about fictional characters not being treated equally? I'm all for equality, but what I'm not for is this blatant bullshit propaganda being perpetually paraded around by women who demonize men to push their own selfish agendas. That's not equality, that's fascism.